Vlog day 437. Happy birthday, Kevin. My friend Holly is back in town. That's really exciting. Uh, my friend Holly has been teaching in the Himalayas for the last like six months and she's back in town and I've been waiting for her to let me know when she's back. So we're gonna go get coffee with her. But first, I still haven't finished editing my vlog from last night because it got back really late and I've been really sleep deprived lately and I went to bed and I hate editing in the morning and it's actually pretty late in the morning. It's almost 11.30 because I let myself sleep in pretty late it was well. So I'd actually get like a full eight hours of sleep for once. So for those of you who were waiting for it yesterday, the today, now, but yesterday, now, but also who knows when in the future, sorry, uh, it's coming, it's on its way. So I'm gonna finish that and then we're gonna get out of here and go see Holly. But you can see, I'm doing okay after a little bit of sleep. <sighs> and there's stuff weighing on me. I wanna talk about a couple different things. So we'll see, what, we'll, see, we'll see what comes out of this today. Today's Writer of the Wednesday, what I wanted to talk about was the difference between writing and revising, at least for me. What is that? The goal is to talk about writing versus revising, obviously part of the same process. Clearly differentiating between the original creative process and then going back and making it stronger. I'm actually having a hard time coming down on which side I prefer. I would say I prefer the writing side. I'd love to just sit and write and create something new. I prefer that a lot to the revising side. However, the writing side, does have a lot of good parts to it. And even though I think it's harder in a lot of ways, it can definitely be kind of cathartic. I think one of the major similarities, I was thinking about this and it's really hard for me to edit without momentum. A lot harder than it is with writing. With writing, I write better with momentum. The more I'm writing, the more consistently I'm writing, the easier it goes because you get into a rhythm, things kind of roll a little bit easier, it, you remember where you're going, it's just easier to keep the story in mind. But if you come back to it in small chunks and just write a little bit here and there, it adds up over time and it's not necessarily that big of a deal if you can't do it all at once. Conversely, with editing, like you absolutely have to have momentum, at least I do, in order to keep not only the story in mind in its entirety, but to keep all those changes that you're making as you weave it through the structure of the story in mind. Then if you forget that, it makes it really, really difficult to maintain consistency. And so then if you just only get, you know, to work on a few pages or a chapter a week or something like that, then it's like, well, where, what, like, what did I change? I forget if I already changed that, I forget if I put that, like, it just, it's hard to keep it all straight. So ideally, if you can sit and revise for long periods of time at once, I think that makes it way, way, way more doable. Writing, if you fit into the same ideal, obviously, but writing again is something you can come back to and kind of pick back up and roll with as you go. So that's one major difference for me. Sneaky. Hey! How are you? I'm good. Good to see you. Have you ever seen that before? Nah. I hate the selfie cam. So we're just wandering around now just for the heck of it, taking a stroll. And I was showing her, this is a space meter I got the other night. I didn't film it because I was out pretty late with Phil but it's a C-3PO and a Wookiee. See, kinda cool, right? Isn't that neat? So I don't know who this, oh, this guy, this is another street artist actually in the city. So those, that cat, you'll see that guy all over the Marais. There's some, the big yellow cat all over the place. And then we got a Squiddy here. This one is on Holly. She found this one right away. Good job. That's an old one too. There is my favorite one used to be right here on our entire tour and then it got stolen because there are guys going around stealing them and selling them on the black market which is super douchey so. The irony is that it's illegal to put them up and now it's also legal to take them down because the city of Paris is like we'll prosecute people if we catch them doing it so. Yeah, that's good. Which is good. 
And then one other thing that I haven't been highlighting very much, but is really fun is when people take street signs and make them into something else. So that's a do not enter sign and the police officer really loves it. It's good. There's a samurai that carries bars around town a lot too. So we'll see if we can find one of those. Okay, so that's the third squid eating in a row that we found that has one ear. Do you know which ear Van Gogh cut off? I did. Was it his right ear? So anyways, they all have a left ear, and I'm wondering if this is a reference to Van Gogh because Van Gogh's art is not too far from here, but that seems a little bit of a stretch. But I've never seen squiddies with ears before, so that's, or ears singular, yet plural, if you get what I mean. So this is another one, it's, um, I think the game is Bubble Bobble. I think it's Bubble Bobble. Little dragon from, it's, uh, I forget what the name of the game is. but I don't think it's a real Space Invader. I've tried scanning it before. We'll see if it works now. I'm gonna try and flash it. Okay, it is one, sweet. I'm really, I was just saying, I'm really glad to know that it is one because I tried scanning before and it didn't go through and I've been telling people that is a Space Invader. It's so cool. And then there's um, Charles de Gaulle all over the place. See, Charles de Gaulle. Kind of squiddy thing up there. And then, yeah, so then there's a, a Mega Man squiddy. That's really funny. I like the Mega Man squiddy, that's a winner. It's good to have her back in town. So, well, she's only in town for like a few more days and then she's gone again, but really also good to hear about her time in Nepal. She had a wonderful, wonderful experience. So it's really, really, really good to hear about that. This is not the direction that I want to go. So that was great. Um, now, I'm finally, I keep trying and it keeps not happening because other things keep happening, but the goal tonight, pico de gallo, guac, we're making nachos, mother friends. Of course, writing, uh, finishing a new story, there's something really, really exhilarating about it, getting everything down in your first draft. This massive sense of relief that you've got it. You know, you put it on paper, it's out in the world, it exists, so that's huge. But then on the revising side, when you finish, you really, that's for me, that's when you feel like you've accomplished something, and there's a sadness to it, but it's also like, you can move on, you can go to the next step. And that's a really good feeling, too. I really find the struggles to be different too in the midst of it. Like when you're writing, you're trying to stay true to a vision that you had when you started. And at least for me, I often end up making compromises because I'm like, well, this kind of makes more sense now that I'm in it. Or the other way around, where it's like, I don't think I can do this because it's not quite what I had envisioned and not knowing for sure which is gonna work. The vision, you're trying to figure out how to stay true to that, but also how to make the story work on deeper levels, on other levels, how to pull it all together. So they're very different processes, both emotionally and also in the structure of the story. Okay, uh, I got a few things done. Some admin work has been done. And now the thing is I'm gonna go buy stuff for Pico and Guac. It's the plan, but then I have a phone call in a half an hour, so I'm not gonna get to eat it right away. <sighs> Which is terrible. So, uh, we're gonna manage. I also am gonna be buying some ridiculously delicious cheese to make these nachos out of. Which I've been meaning to buy at the market every time I've been by a market, but I keep not doing so today's the day. I'm gonna go buy that. Gonna make that stuff. We'll get that stuff out of the way, and then um, I'll eat at that stuff, and then I think that, that, that'll that be it. Anyways, let's go. All right, Susan, I'm going to use your uh, pico de gallo super simple recipe. I just gotta, I just forget how to try, I don't remember if cilantro was in French, so I've gotta look that up really quick. This Mimo, how old is this Mimo at? It's extra, extra view, which means it's like extra old, which means it's intense. 18 months, not bad. And only four euros for that chunk, so I'm ready for her to make some Mimo that nachos. It didn't record the, uh, the whole tomatoes part, but they're in there now. All right, I've made 
my pico de gallo and my guacamole. Now the only the reason I kind of cringe is that for guacamole like this, uh, well the avocado, the avocado is not like the best. But I also would usually have some seasonings, uh, garlic, salt, and salt. That's about it. So there's salt in this. In this, I would really like to have some like peppers of some kind. But I forgot to buy it. I forgot to even try to find any. And jalapenos are hard to find here, but I'll have to try later to get them. I'm too hungry to go back to the store though. It's, I've been working on this for far too long. So I'm gonna try this, taste test. Then I'm gonna fry up some chicken, make some taco meat, and make nachos. Okay, let's give this a try. The guac test. Tasty. I didn't even think about this. I wish I would have drained the extra sauce out of the can because the, the fresh tomato juice tasted really good. I have a feeling that I might have slightly ruined it, but give it a try. Also really tasty. Needs a little bit more salt and definitely some peppers. Other than that, really good. I guess I could have probably cut up some garlic and put it in there. Turns out my friend Deb's going away gift had not just taco seasoning in it, but guacamole seasoning as well. So Deb, I'm using your seasoning today. Anna, your seasoning is gonna get used on Thursday with the horse meat tacos. And my microwave is too small for the plate to rotate. And uh, it's not the most evenly spread cheese because I don't have a grater. It's not really a gratable cheese, but open. Ah. Almost there. Probably give it another like 10 or 15 seconds. It smells really good. Nima let on nachos is a thing that should be happening every day.